Today is the day we're rebuilding this 250. What's up guys and welcome back. Today we are, like I said, we are finally going to rebuild my 250. I have all the parts in this box. I have all oh, the case right here and there's even more parts all the way over here. Today we can finally rebuild my 250. I can go through the whole engine and all that, putting it back into frame and I'm going to show you the whole process of how to rebuild. I think it's an 06 through an 09 250 basically. Then I also have other plans to make this bike even cooler. So like all the other parts, I got these from motorsport.com and this is a, a hot rods crank and piston set. Again, thanks to motorsport, not, not sponsored. Um, came with all new gaskets to completely rebuild the motor from Athena. Then, like I said, hot rods. Yes, I'm struggling. A brand new hot rods crankshaft. Minty. And it does have a connecting rod on there, along with along with the new Wiseco piston. One thing that I do you suggest doing is um, Motorsport.com has all these kind of printouts or pictures of how everything comes together. Like this is the transmission, then this is the kickstart spindle, which can be a little tricky. This is all the shift drum components, then the whole clutch. There's probably more I should be I should look up, but I think I have enough knowledge to like somewhat put this together and be fine. Um, but the transmission is a little bit tricky because I, as you can see, there's a whole lot of parts. There's a whole lot of parts that go into it, and I just I just want to make sure that everything runs fine and all the gears are aligned up and all that, and um, it'll run smooth. So I think that's what we're going to start with first is trying to figure out this transmission so let's get into it all right so getting started on the transmission you want to make sure the shift drum is in the neutral position and I'm going to show you how you determine that so right in here you can see this little roller and all around this drum there are notches so you have to kind of find the one it's hard to see in there but there is a position where it kind of clearly shows the neutral position all the other grooves that are in that drum are going to be deeper but the one for the new position is a little bit raised and it will kind of sit perf perfectly in there. One thing you could also do is before you remove the engine or anything, you just leave the bike in neutral and just don't touch it at all and try to keep it that way. So right here I have the case and the two main shafts that have all the gears on it and also the, the two sets of shift forks. One has two and one only has one. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to be keep referencing this, this sheet. So the first one that it says to put in would be this guy right here. This is, the, this is the one that also connects to your clutch basket. And it has only one, one dog gear that has that slot in it for that fork. So, of course, this, this fork will be going in, into this shaft. All right, I may have to put this one in first then the one that goes to the clutch. So I went ahead and stabbed this one in and now I'm going to try and fit this other one. Again you may have to spin some of these gears for them to slide in. Actually I'm going to take off this gear. There, that seemed to helped it a little bit. There's this collar right here that the gear will kind of glide on, that bearing. Then just throw on that other bearing. The one reason you may be turning it and wondering why it gets bound up at some places, and that is because we have yet to put in these other shift forks. 
So you just gotta find the, the correct dog gear. All right, so I got the two shafts in along with all three shift forks. Uh, the forks are gonna be a little bit tricky because you have to get the dog gear in the right place so it's gonna go in and out and also getting in the right groove for the shift drum. And you know it'll work because if you hold the, this, this first one right here, if you hold this one and the other one and turn it, and turn the one that's driven by the sprocket, it should turn freely like, like it's in neutral. So that's, no, that's how you know it works. So moving on from here, we have to start putting together the, my new crankshaft. Alright, I grabbed my new crankshaft, we're going to go ahead and rip this bad boy open. Alright, looking nice. So the one with this little gear on the end, that's the one that drives your cam chain. So you just gotta know that. So it would actually sit like this in the engine. And your bearing is actually gonna be pressed in or stabbed in right through right through this main bearing here. But before we do that, we have to put together the new top, the new piston itself. So on this piston, this arrow is actually marking the exhaust. These, these two valve leaves right here are bigger, that's for the intake, and the small ones are for the exhaust. So this kind of tells me that this is an interference motor, so if your cam is so off timing, your valves can actually slap the top of your piston, and that's why they have these reliefs to stop it from doing that. So to start assembling your crank and piston setup, you're gonna kind of set up your crank where it'll sit in the motor. So it'll sit like this, aligned with that. Then get your piston to make sure your exhaust is facing the right way and your intake is facing the right way. Then this is your wrist pin. This is what kind of guides this, this motion right here, this rocking back and forth. But before we do that, we are going to, on one side, install one of these circlips that hold the wrist pin in. So that way, we can just guide the pin in, but it'll stop. Then we can put the other side in as well. So what I'm going to do is set it in the groove that's in there and kind of roll it in. There, it snapped in. So you can see in there that that circlip is in. So now we can kind of do the same thing, again, making sure this pistons line up and send through the wrist pin. Make sure you get no burrs or anything. Kind of start it, line it up, and send it through. Then just remember to put in this other circlip or else it'll just slide out. Alright, I got the wrist pin in and that other circlip in. And just one thing you want to be careful of is getting these other clips in because they can just pop out at you and go anywhere so you just gotta re be really careful next thing we gotta do is install our new rings so what with, with this piston it only has two grooves for rings but there are four rings so the reason why there's two grooves but there's four rings is because we have a top compression ring which goes around the top that top ring but there is one oil ring and two other rings that get that go kind of sandwich it. So one goes on top, one goes on the bottom, and then this kind of goes in between in that second groove. We're going to start with the second groove. So we're going to install one of the first uh, oil rings, basically a scraper ring. Then we'll do the next, the main oil ring. But when you're also installing rings, you don't want all the gaps to line up. So you're going to have a gap here, a gap here, a gap there, a gap there. So they're all evenly, evenly spaced out. And these, are, these should be all gapped to stock, stock bore size because that's what I'm running. You get the idea. You just got to make sure all the gaps are in different spots and just slide them over and make sure they're all 
or else seat it in properly. All right, after installing your rings and making sure all the gaps are good, you're basically ready to put the crank in. So you just make sure this is kind of upright and really just, you just stab it in and you can do a little bit of taps with a little, just a dead blow or something. But eventually it all gets squeezed in once the case is in and you got all the other all the other gearing in too. So with that being said, we can move on to actually putting the case back on. Before putting the gasket on and putting on the other side of the case, we actually have to find the small oil pump. This is what this this oil pump looks like. It just kind of moves around like that in a circle and moves oil around in the motor. And I'm going to show you where this goes. So it goes right in this hole. And what you're going to do is take this part of it and slide it in first. And you're going to take this smaller piece and drop that in. When putting in the oil pump, you do have to have that shaft in on the other side because it, it is only a one-way fit. It can only come in through this way and not the other way. So we're just going to line this up and use the, the dowel pins on the case to help line this gasket up. There's one more thing you got to install and that's just this little oil baffle. It just fits right in there and then you can put on the case. Then, slowly try to drop this on. It is going to be a little bit tricky because there's a lot of pins and stuff that have to be lined up in order for it to fully go on. Alright, it was a long and tedious process of slowly mating things together, but it just took a little bit of tapping with the dead blow and it finally came together. But just make sure that you get this shaft for the the oil pump all lined up then along with that that oil baffle in here that that little filter then just make sure it all slides together nice and make sure all your gears work you know you're still in neutral and maybe shift up and down a little bit with the mechanism on the side but yeah that that's really how it all goes together now we just gotta find all the bolts and put them all in and just snug it tight all right, I went ahead and just threw in all the bolts. Um, now, if you really wanted to, you could throw the engine in the frame right now and just keep working on it. But I think I'm just going to throw in as much as I can. But I know that you do not want the cylinder head on when you put the motor into the frame. So as you can see from from the gasket, it kind of left this leftover tab. You just want to cut those off so they're flush and yeah so far you just got you can, now you got two cases together to make sure everything rotates smooth yeah so that is uh, putting the whole case back together so next video we'll be doing um, probably mostly all on this side and some on this side too because a lot of these components go hand in hand like there, it's a balancer that comes through here that connects to some gears on this side. Then, of course, everything on else on the other side. Then, at that point, you you basically are ready to put in, put the motor into your frame. So that will conclude this video for putting the two cases, your crankshaft and your transmission together, and that'll be it. I'll see you guys in the next one.